chance, we are here by divine appointment. So as I welcome you this morning, I welcome our viewing audience, I know that this word goes forth for all of us, and energetically, that there is a power for good in the universe greater than we are. We are using it, that's why we are in this way of life. This morning, we're going to be looking at our inner being. Our theme for the month is the science of life. And when Dr. Ernest Holmes was asked, what is this way of life, in a sentence, you know, when you can really boil it down to a sentence, you know your topic. The laws of science, the opinions of philosophy, the revelations of religion apply to human need and the aspirations of man and woman. So our daily life is our temple and our religion. And I say every Sunday we have no creed but love, Love one another as I have loved you. And we have no doctrine but the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Interface Spiritual Center recognizes that we move beyond color, race, creed, and sexual orientation because our God is a God of oneness. Do you agree? Yes. I think we all came in knowing that. We knew it as little children. Hate is a learned thing. And when we recognize our oneness, moving beyond everything, we are lifted to the next level. There's a great story about a man who prayed. He said, well, I didn't exactly pray. I asked the universe for a more meaningful life. And I was walking down the street feeling really self-important, looking good, the yuppie guy that I am. And he said, as I was walking down the street, I noticed that there was a man and he was kind of swaggering and he was kind of, you know, going back and forth. And I thought, well, he may be ill. So he said, the old me would have never, ever gone to be with a person like that, okay? So he moved through his considerations. He went up and he said, how may I help you? And the man just reeked of gin, just reeked. And he could see that you know, he didn't have all of his uh, uh, faculties together because, frankly, he was drunk. So he guided him over to some steps and sat with him, and people were passing by, and he said in the past, he would have been just mortified of anyone seeing him with a person like that. And the guy got out a cigarette, and he lighted it, and began to tell him about his life, and that, you know, he was at the top of his game that things were amazing in his life. You know, had you know, a thousand employees. What an amazing life. And as he began to talk about his life and about you know, the things with, that go on in the world with cycles and contractions, he said he lost everything. And he said, had you not come here today to see me hanging on to this scaffolding, I would have taken my own life. Thank you for saving my life. And this young, yuppie guy looked at him and said, and on some level you saved my life today because I asked for guidance and a more meaningful life and you showed up. Later he said that man was his angel because it created this domino effect of good in his life of movie, moving beyond appearances, conditions, and effects of what will people think. And of course, we know the eternal people are saying, right? There is one life, that life is God's life, that life is perfect, and that life is our life right here and right now. And no matter what our objective experience in the outer world, there is an inner being that has never been touched by grief. It has never given offense, nor has it ever taken offense. Some people make a profession of being offended. We know who they are. Kind of tiptoe around them right on eggshells. And bless them, and just know the angel of light will reveal herself, and today they can become that. I tear down the walls of opinion that separate my brothers and sisters from me. I set them free from the projection of myself. I will not measure them with the yardstick of yesterday, for perhaps in the night an angel of light revealed to them what they are. And today, they may be that. 
We can never judge anyone on past behavior. We want to do that. We want to know that a leopard never changes its spots. But perhaps in the night, an angel of light revealed to them what they are. And today, they may be that. When we open the space to our spiritual life, old habits just fall away. It's, the Bible talks about putting new wine into old wine skins. It won't expand, will it? It cracks and it breaks and all the wine is dissipated. But when we put new thoughts energetically into an expansive mind, we begin to expand. The psalmist said, be still and know that I am God. God and I are the majority. We teach this in our way of life. We embrace this and this knowingness that everyone who crosses our path, we are related to. And they are our teacher for that moment. And that as we open to the inner being, we are opening to Christ consciousness, the Buddha na nature, the holy I am presence, that when Moses looked at that burning bush and said, who are you, what are you? The voice answered, cast off your shoes, for where you stand is holy ground. And what that means symbolically and metaphorically, cast off anything that stands between you and your spiritual knowingness. When you're tempted to gossip, let that go. That no longer serves. And when people come to me and they want to tell me stuff about certain people and all of that, I just share that I'm not receptive to that. For perhaps in the night, an angel of light revealed to them what they are. And today, they may be that. This is as a light bearer. We create the light and we share and hold that space of enlightenment for others. In the school of ministry, people would say, well, you know, I have something really good to share, you know, because we were not into gossip. And they said, boy, is this good, right? This is really good. I don't care what name we call it. If it does not pass through the kindness, the compassion, and the energy of light, we don't give voice. We don't remember that the throat chakra is the power center where we speak things into being. Jesus said, decree a thing and it is established unto thee. And absolutely, if we're not <laughs> conscious, ignorance of the laws, no excuse. I talk about the little toll fares of life that we get to pay. They're, you know, they're in the form of maintenance and they're in the form of sometimes receiving tickets from uh, whatever, the highway patrol. <laughs> Uh, right, I call these the little toll fares of life. And so I was, uh, I was visiting uh, uh, my daughter in San Juan <coughs> Strano, and um, I was coming home and I have a GPS, and I'm really glad I have this little GPS, right? And she has a very authoritative voice, very authoritative. She says, veer to the left. I'm on the freeway. Riverside, veer to the left. 0.5 miles, veer to the left. I'm veering to the left, I'm following the GPS, and I see the sign that says toll road. But I see people far right, you know, they're, they're paying, I guess, some sort of a toll. And this is late at night, I'm following the GPS, I think I'm, you know, doing good works and visiting those that have been hospitalized and all of that. And the voice said, veer to the left, Riverside. So. I, you know, I get home and I think, you know, that was really interesting. And I don't know how, exactly how to call toll roads or, you know, I don't know anyone that works for them. And I forgot about it. And yesterday I got a little notice in the mail that said the toll fare was $3.25 and now it is $60 because I did not go veering to the right. I listened to the GPS. Do you think that if I'm going to call them and say, my, my GPS said veer to the left? <laughs> Have mercy! I'm visiting someone who was hospitalized for a month. Sixty dollars, please. <laughs> Thank you for your story, right? These are the little toll fares of life. So I thought, well, I'm grateful. The last time I got a ticket was three hundred dollars. I'm doing better. I'm doing better. We have to acknowledge ourselves that we're doing better, and be ever so aware. And it's about our awareness of the inner being that guides and directs us every step of the way. We're part of the human condition. 
You know, I think that when I hear about someone's dis-ease and what they've been through, this is always a gift. And when we take the gift out of the experience, we move on in such a way that we don't have to experience that again. Because IDTA, when Beverly, uh, Beverly Mills, is, is that it? Or Beverly Sims, the great opera singer that retired? Sills. Sills. Oh, y'all know it's great to have an informed audience, isn't it? A great community. She retired. And she had to wear this necklace, you know, because everybody was so upset that she quit. And it was IDTA, and people would look at her necklace and say, IDTA, and what does that mean? She said, well, if you're going to now say, I'm so sorry you quit, go back to opera singing, I'm just going to say IDTA, which means I did that already. And now I'm doing a new thing. Behold, I am doing a new thing. It's this new day, this new opportunity to do a new thing. If we're going to pray for guidance, if we're going to pray for a more meaningful life, it might take the form of a drunk holding onto a scaffold and us veering him away from it as an angel of light, revealing what they are, and today, them becoming that and us becoming a deeper expression of who we are. We forgive the human condition. We forgive our foibles. We forgive that we're, we made a commitment, you know, not to be addicted to this, that, or the other, and we slip. We forgive ourselves. We move on. And as we forgive ourselves and have compassion for ourselves, guess what? We have such a deep level of compassion for each other. I remember Carolyn Mace once in a lecture stating that there, she was in South Africa, and I've also spoken in South Africa, and it's so beautiful, in Cape Town, prettier than La Jolla. It's just gorgeous. And she said that she uh, it was sort of a safari seminar kind of thing, and people were there, and she said there was one guy there, and he was in his little safari suit with his little safari hat with the, you know, little, uh, uh, kind of like an animal band around it and his safari, you know, jacket. And uh, he said that after the seminar of how to be enlightened, he was going to go hunting with this other group. And he was going to kill himself a leopard. And she said, I could feel myself and the energy just come right on up. I felt my ears burning. I thought, Carol, don't say it. Don't say it. This is what you teach. Don't say it. Just be with this energy. And she said, that ego part of me just wanted to say it. And it just kept bubbling up and my ears got redder and redder. And finally I just turned and said, so you're a murderer? And he said, well, I hadn't really thought of it like that. And she said, I knew it was unkind. I know that you're not going to lead anyone to the door of enlightenment through unkindness or judging them. And that ego part of me just bubbled up. And then she said, by the end of the day, she said, I recognized what had happened. And I recognized that people are just where they are. That if they are so insecure, they, know they go out and kill one of the beautiful animals, that's really none of my business. And I just need to know that we have a lot of work to do on the planet, and that is no reason to ever be unkind. It is to create the space of healing and to perhaps give a contrast energetically of these beautiful animals that are there for us to enjoy and in and, and their aliveness and in the energy of nature. You know? And so when we grow and unfold, we recognize these things, but we've got to shed the old skins. We've got to expand our mind, putting the new wine in the expansive vehicle. And what happens is, you know, Nature just unfolds. It's cyclic. You never see a snake, and I have seen and witnessed a snake absolutely coming out of its skin at the San Diego Zoo, and it's just miraculous. But I didn't hear the snake say, oh, my God, getting rid of this soul skin. You have no idea what I'm going through. Oh, but look how beautiful it is. Maybe I should put it up. 
I should put it back on. It's so lovely. I've had it for so long. It's so hard to let it go. Oh my gosh. You never hear that. They just let it go. They let go and let God do what God does best. And it's all part of nature. It's all part of the intuitive process. We call it instinctual in nature. With us, it's intuitive. It's time to let go of this old skin that no longer serves me. It's time to let go of judging what other people should do, what I think they should be doing, because my opinion is so important. People are where they are. They are growing and they are unfolding and doing the best they can. It's not up to us to be their judge and their jury. And it's interesting because uh, on Facebook, my godson, Jonathan Mugridge, who is in the airlines, he is a, an airline attendant. In my day, I was a stewardess, but in his day, it's called airline attendant. And he said that uh, this, fun, you know, a man of fundamentalist descent gave him a pamphlet. And he said, uh, Jesus died for your sins. Give up homosexuality. Something like that, right? And uh, he said, normally I would have just taken it and thanked the passenger. But he said, something was within me. And I just said, I want to know why Jesus lived. I wanted the message of love one another as I have loved you. And the greatest commandment that he, he gave us was to love. Not if you're a homosexual or you're straight or you're whatever that Jesus loved us all. And he said, you know, he felt that he had an edge and that, you know, he was reacting somewhat. And, but in that moment, he said it was necessary for him to say it and to end it. And as I'm reading this, I'm feeling very proud of him because he said, I recognize that I too need to grow. But I want to know energetically about love and about peace and the things that Jesus taught, not about the sins, which is an ancient archery term that means you missed the mark. You missed the mark. So if you miss the mark, you get to do it again. And what was so great about that exchange is he said, I'm a Gnostic and I believe that the energy is everywhere present. And the principles <coughs> that Jesus taught this commandment I give thee, that ye love one another, as I have loved you. Love thy neighbor as thyself, which presupposes what? The inner being loves itself. And if the inner being loves itself, it loves everyone, even the intolerant, even those that are judging. He drew a circle that shut me out, but love and I had the wit to win. We drew a circle that took him in. So today, as I greet you, and acknowledge the inner being within each of us. I know this day in whom we live and move and have our being. It is the energy of consciousness, of Christ consciousness, the Buddha nature, and the holy I am presence that says, ah, I am in a high place and I will not come down. Where are we going? Higher yet. Where? Higher yet. Where? Higher yet. And so it is. God bless you. And it's a joy to be with you this morning.